how I know my patient is ready for discharge, how to plan for the discharge and make my discharge notes is the topic of today's video. This is the seventh video of the first week of residency tips. A link to the full playlist is provided below. Let's start. To discharge a patient, we must achieve the treatment goals first and arrange for a safe discharge second. Both elements must be present before placing the discharge order. At the same time of the admission, we must set the treatment goals for each patient and we must communicate these goals to, to them. Ideally, at the end of our encounter, after we explain to them the diagnosis and the treatment plan, we mention the treatment goals. In general, the goal of admission is to stabilize the primary acute problem to a point where the treatment can be finished as an outpatient. To be more specific, treatment goals means the following. A significant improvement in the presenting signs and or symptoms. We are talking about improvement, not a complete resolution. A significant improvement in abnormal diagnostic data. The patient is tolerating diet or has a secure source of nutrition and we have stable vital signs on the day of discharge. Not necessarily completely normal vital signs, but stable vital signs. I daily ask my patients how they feel on that specific day relative to the admission day. We always refer back to the admission day to measure the improvement we have achieved. And if I hear them saying something like, I feel 100% better, I feel a whole lot better, or any phrase that carries the same meaning, I know they are ready for discharge. For diagnostic data, we are mainly talking about improvements in abnormal lab values or abnormal EKG or imaging, if applicable. As not all imaging or EKG abnormalities will quickly or ever normalize or improve. For example, a patient who present with acute kidney injury and hyperkalemia, let's say with B1 and creatinine of 70 and 4 and potassium of 6.5 relative to a normal baseline before admission. Significant improvement here means a steady trending down of these values such as B1 and creatinine of from 70 and 4 to 50 and 3 then 30 and 1.6 and potassium from 6 then 5.1 for example. I do not have to wait for the full normalization of these values. I just want to see a series of values trending back to normal. Let's take an example of how to set the treatment goal this time. You are admitting a patient with acute gallstone pancreatitis with abnormal LFTs. What would be the treatment goals for this patient? I would tell this patient something like this. Of course, after I explain the diagnosis and the treatment plan, I'll say, hey, you may be asking how long you will be staying in the hospital. This actually depends on how quickly you respond to the treatment plan. I will get you home as soon as the pain has resolved, you can eat with no problems, your LFTs are improving, and the general surgery team evaluated you for gallbladder removal as it's the source of your acute pancreatitis. If they decide to remove your gallbladder this admission, during this admission, then I will have to wait until they clear you from their standpoint to go home. I suspect this may take four to five days, but could be sooner or later. It all depends on your response to the treatment plan. Of course, I'm assuming he doesn't have a common bowel duct stone that require ARCP. Notice that I do not give any absolute answer regarding the length of stay or disposition. I always leave a little bit of vagueness just in case things change. Now that's being said, achieving treatment goals is only 50% of the discharge. A safe discharge is the other 25%. Now before we continue with the safe discharge, remember that you can get a summary of this video and access to the previous video summaries by subscribing to my Substack page. The link is provided below. So what do I mean by safe discharge? It means the patient has a safe place to be discharged to. The patient can perform essential tasks, transferring from one place to another, cleaning, preparing food, etc. Or have someone to help with that or be discharged to a place that can help with that. Third, the patient has access to a follow-up care, needed medical equipment and medications. These are the elements of safe discharge. So the plan for safe discharge starts simultaneously with achieving treatment goals and includes early ambulation, ordering physical therapy, occupational therapy and speech therapy whenever indicated. Ordering physical therapy is particularly important in elderly patient and we order it as early as possible. Also discontinue equipment as early as possible including weaning of oxygen, discontinuing Foley catheter and any other equipment whenever feasible. Transition into oral medication as early as possible. Advanced diet to the patient's home type of diet as early as possible. Arrange for needed outpatient equipment early such as home oxygen, 
medication, outpatient physical therapy, etc. Keep your case manager or discharge planner in the loop. All hospitals now have daily runs between providers and discharge planners to remove any discharge obstacles. Now let's move to the disposition. Hospitals patient gets discharged to one of the following places. Home independently or home with home physical therapy, skilled nursing facility, i.e. nursing home or what we call subacute rehab, acute rehabilitation facility, patients with suicidal attempts or ideation are discharged to a psychiatric facility and inmates are discharged back to prison. Some patients will be transferred to another hospital for more advanced services and homeless people may be offered to go to shelters. Now, acute rehab places provide more intense physical therapy compared to nursing homes and are ideal for patients with strokes, trauma patients, orthopedic procedures, and limb amputations. Physical therapy assessment will guide us on whether the patient should be discharged home, home with home health, skilled nursing facility, or acute rehab facility. Now, it's important to know that most patients will require their insurance company's approval to be discharged to skilled nursing facility or acute rehab facility. Remember, home is the best place for the patient to be discharged to whenever possible. Please update the patients or their families about the discharge plan as they may not agree with our plans or have some concerns that we must address as early as possible. Now on the discharge day, please explain to the patient discharge instructions, follow-ups, medications, major side effects to watch for new medications, ask them if they have any questions. The discharge medications reconciliation should be done on the day of discharge and reviewed if it was done before. Ensure prescriptions are sent to the pharmacy. Some medications are essential and we must ensure the patient can afford the full amount or the copay. Do not discharge the patient if he cannot or she cannot afford these essential medications. For example, for a patient who needs dual antiplatelet therapy for a stent that was just placed, we must ensure they will have access to these dual antiplatelet therapy. The last thing we need is to discharge the patient to only come back later with an acute MI because he could not get access to these dual antiplatelet therapy because they were expensive and the insurance declined to pay for that. And please place the discharge order as soon as the discharge decision is made. The time of discharge is a metric that's closely monitored by the hospital administrations. Hospitals are pretty obsessed with two things. The length of stay of patients, the shorter it is, the more money they make, and time of discharge on the day of the discharge. The earlier the discharge, the more room we have for the new patients and to keep the ED flow. One of the major discharge obstacles that we come on the day we want to discharge our patient then suddenly we oh we did not do this it's failure to anticipate any discharge needs before discharge day and this is the main reason and this is unnecessary delay of the patient discharge discharge need i'm talking about is something like that arranging outpatient iv antibiotic therapy placing a pick line earlier uh, arranging outpatient tpn arranging outpatient medical equipment and outpatient services second not submitting early for insurance approval and third not working on prescriptions approval for expensive medication earlier. And that's why case manager or discharge planners should be involved on day one for the discharge plan. Most hospitals now have daily meetings, as I said, between different teams to facilitate and streamline the discharge process. Another reason for discharge delay is to try to fix, and this is important for the new interns, is to try to fix all medical problems the patient has. Please focus on the primary problem and any problem that cannot be deferred to outpatient follow-up. For example, a patient admitted with an acute exacerbation of COPD but has chronic back pain. Please try to stabilize the COPD exacerbation and don't try to solve his chronic back pain. Leave that to outpatient follow-up. Just resume his home medication for that back pain on the admission. Let's talk about discharge note or summaries. The discharge note is a summary of the patient's hospital stay. A good summary is the one that passes what I call the first glance test. The first glance test means that I can find out about the reason of admission, the discharge diagnosis, important procedures and diagnostics data in less than a minute. Physicians do not have time to dig deep in the discharge summaries to get this info. Some discharge summary, they have all this info, but they are disorganized and scattered and takes extra effort to extract these pieces of information. The following framework will ensure your discharge note passes the first glance test. Date of admission, date of discharge, then reason of admission or for admission, then discharge diagnosis. Here we put the final diagnosis or the most likely ones. The consultation made during this hospital stay. We 
put the name of the consultant and the type of consultations, procedures, type, date, and performer of the procedures, relevant diagnostic data, only those relevant to the final diagnosis, and then hospital course, a brief description of the events during the hospital stay, and then we document the physical exam on the day of discharge, then we list the discharge medications, then we list the follow-up plans, and then we list the disposition where the patient will be discharged to, and then we list the discharge diet, what kind, then discharge activity, and then discharge condition is a stable, a grave, guarded, etc. Then we acknowledge that we explain to the patient their discharge diagnosis, follow-up plans, newer medication educations, and answer all their questions. And then we finish by documenting the discharge time because this will affect the billing code and how much payment is to be reimbursed for this discharge summary. A link to download this framework is provided in the description field. In the end, if you found this video useful, kindly give it a like, share it with your colleagues, and subscribe to the channel if you have not done so. Again, to receive a summary of this video and access previous video summaries, kindly subscribe to my Substack page. The link is provided below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.